This is the Intel Xeon E5 1650V3. Why are you so cheap, you little fuck? It's an older CPU that was released in 2012, but it has six cores, 12 threads, 3.4 gigahertz base clock rate, and 3.8 gigahertz turbo boost. Now, despite those specs being actually pretty good, this processor is typically listed for around $25 used on eBay, which for those specs, it's actually really cheap, especially when compared to other similar processors. So the question remains, why, question mark, slash, does it suck, question mark, end of statement. So you can see from these listings here, it's very common to find this for between $20 and $25. Now, we can look at some other processors from the Intel i-series that are not quite the same, but similar, and we'll see that the prices are very different. And there's a few possible reasons for that, but overall, it seems like at those specs, this really could be a good value processor for that price, especially. So first we have the i7 6700. The base clock rate for this processor is 3.4 gigahertz, though it does have a higher turbo boost than the Xeon processor. The turbo boost for the 6700 is 4.0, but that being said, the i7-6700 only has four cores and eight threads, whereas the Xeon has six cores. And even though the i7-6700 has close to the same clock rate and less cores, it generally goes for usually around three times the price of what we got the Xeon processor for. Typically, you'll find it listed for between $65 to $80, so quite a difference there. Now, the next processor from the i-series that's comparable would be the i7-8700. The i7-8700, like the Xeon 1650v3, has six cores and 12 threads. It has a lower base clock rate at 3.2 gigahertz, Hertz. But that being said, on the high end with turbo boost, it can go up to 4.6 gigahertz, which is significant. But as you'll see, the 8700 also comes along with a very significant increase in price. The i7-8700 tends to sell used for around $140, give and take, you know, $20, $30, depending on the deal. But it's very rare to find them used on eBay for less than $100. So again, the specs are better, but they're not that much better, especially considering the fact that you're paying probably four or five times what you would pay for the Xeon processor. So what's happening? Or as the rabbits like to say, what's hoppening? I'll show myself out. Well, the first thing I would think of is that the Intel Xeon processors tend to be workstation processors, which is what this is designed for, a workstation type computer. And for that reason, it has a unique socket type, which means you're going to be limited in the kind of motherboard you can buy to host this CPU. And that's going to greatly limit your options also in terms of possibly upgrading an older PC, which we've done a few times on this channel and we will do in the future. So you are limited in that sense, but there are still some sort of consumer grade PCs that do host these processors. And using a workstation type PC isn't necessarily a bad thing depending on what you want to do, even if you don't want to use it as a server. Now, another possible explanation for the cheapness is that this processor doesn't come with any kind of integrated graphics. But that being said, while that is a downside, most people are using a GPU anyway. So if you have a dedicated graphics card that you're using, then you don't really need any kind of integrated graphics on the processor. So what we're going to do is take this processor, I'm going to throw it in a machine that I have that can hold it, and then we'll just try doing some basic stuff you would do on an everyday PC. We'll try doing some light to moderate gaming just like I would on, um, I actually have a video that I'll put in the description below where I bought an older used PC that had an i7-6700, which again those are close to the same range. So if you want to watch that uh, for comparison, it might be informative. We'll get the CPU installed and do some basic stuff and run some games and see if it sucks. I'll tell you what doesn't suck, chair desk. Swapping out processors is one of my least favorite things to do. 
I'm always worried that something's going to go wrong. It is like one of the more sensitive parts of the computer. But we're gonna do it for the sake of the video. This thing has an absurd amount of RAM. Also came with the AMD Fire Pro W5100. Another really good deal on an old computer I got. I might even do a video on that as well. But we're just gonna pop these screws out. Move this fan. And replace the CPU. Unplug our fan. Should have done that first. Why won't you come out of there? What is happening? Why are you doing this to me? Alright, oh my gosh. Man, that is looking thin on thermal paste anyway. Probably good that we pulled it off when we did. Alright, I'm going to remove this old processor and then we'll replace the fan. Alright, and here is our new processor. Line this up per arrow pointer. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this flat for this next part, especially when we put the paste on. I've got the old excess thermal paste cleaned off the heatsink for the fan. I'm now experiencing extreme stress over having to administer the paste, fear of judgment over said administration of paste, and hyper paranoia as I'm using a new paste distributor and I have no idea how fast it comes out. The heat is on. Or if the paste is applied properly, I should say the heat is off, as in off the CPU and distributed into the... I'll show myself out. Moment of truth. Don't judge me. I'm left-handed. It's weird trying to do this. Should have set up the camera the other way. Oh, what is that? It's like the tiny... What is... What? It's like this tiny, thin little... I don't know. I don't like it. Normally it comes out way thicker. And you can, I just put a dot. I just put like a thick dot right in the center. But this is very thin. Go, you know, I said don't judge me. Go ahead and judge me. Just start the judgment. But we want a couple little dabs in the corners because I don't think it's going to spread that much. Well, it's installed. Don't paste shame me. So the CPU is installed. The system seems to be working. I don't have uh, Windows or anything installed yet. So I'm just running a version of Linux uh, called Botticera just to check the stat, just to make sure it's functional and check the stats. It's been running for a bit. The CPU is not overheating yet. So that's a good sign. I did not like the way that thermal paste situation went down. So I will go ahead. Everything seems functional. So I'm going to go ahead and install Windows, get some games on here and test them out. So now I have Windows installed and everything set up, so we're just going to do some basic tests and see generally how this device functions. When it comes to just doing basic everyday things as well as even some light to moderate level gaming. I'm going to start off with just a basic file transfer from a USB flash drive. I've never actually used one of these. I th I'm pretty sure you install them something like this. Worked perfectly. So this is USB 3.0. This file's just under a gig. It's 818 megabytes. And we're copying this over in real time. And yeah, it's it's obviously nothing crazy, but only takes a few seconds and not bad. So now we're gonna bust out the usual suspects and get into some video game testing. As far as the other specs on this computer, we're running 64 gigabytes of RAM, which for this type of older PC, PC is probably an obscene amount. And this also came with the AMD Fire Pro W5100. That's not a super high-end graphics card, very commonly found used on eBay for around $45 to $50. It's 4 gigabytes GDDR5 and around a gigahertz clock rate. And because it's not like an extremely powerful GPU, it is a good pairing for this processor, especially with the kind of 
of testing we want to do to check out the processor itself. So the first game I'm trying is Fallout 4. We are on the highest graphical settings for this game and running at 1920 by 1080. And as mentioned when I've used this for testing in previous videos, while it is an older game, it's also highly detailed, it's a very large game, and it's actually pretty demanding on the resources of the computer. So it is a decent benchmark if you're just trying to test out whether you can get off the ground and do some basic gaming. And it's running really well, no problems whatsoever. Feels smooth, looks nice, everything's going fine. I'm even going to navigate over to this crappy YouTube channel and we'll, we'll try running the game while also online uh, streaming a song from some person who's terrible at playing music. And still it's running fine. So we're completely fine with that. Next we'll move on to a new-ish game from 2019, uh, Devil May Cry 5, and it is more demanding on the processor and the hardware, so it'll be an, a better benchmark. Alright, Devil May Cry 5. Again, we're running at 1920 by 1080 and we are running the highest in-game graphical settings with this as well. Now, I know you can't really see it, but we have our little in-game FPS counter down in the bottom right corner here. And at the low points, we'll see it when there's a lot of action on the screen and a lot happening. We'll see it dipping down to around 45 frames per second. But as far as the gameplay itself, I, I can't really notice or tell when this is happening by, by playing or looking at it. It still feels smooth, still feels fine. And it, and it seems to generally be hanging between 45 and 60 frames per second. This game is perfectly playable, and, um, and I'm sure if I turn the graphical settings down a little bit, maybe put them on medium, frame rate thing was an issue, lowering the graphical settings a little bit might fix that and keep us running at a steady 60, or close to it. So to answer our question of does it suck, I would say absolutely not. Everyday use is going to be no problem whatsoever, and as we've seen, it's even capable of some decent mid-level gaming, though obviously it's a $20 processor, it's not going to be insane. I was I was actually pretty impressed with it. And just one more final note as well, I don't know exactly at what point the GPU is going to bottleneck, but it's even possible that putting a better graphics card in this, it's possible that we can get even better performance than we're seeing now, though I, I can't say that absolutely. Anyways, I think we've answered the question, and as always, I appreciate everyone who's been watching. And I will catch you later.